Stu Gatz here. Did you know that every single episode of the Dan Levitard Show is now on Spotify? Yes, the same app that has millions of songs now also has thousands of podcasts. On Spotify, you can listen to all your favorite shows and discover new ones. Just not too many. We get jealous very easily. To subscribe to our show, search for the Dan Levitard Show, tap follow, and get every new episode delivered to you. Podcast on Spotify, they are streaming right now. And now, and now, and now, and now, and now, and now, and now. Is your home an ADT home? If not, you have to get ADT and help protect against break-ins, fire, and carbon monoxide. For a limited time, get ADT's lowest rate starting at just $28.99 a month from the most trusted name in home security. Go to ADT.com slash podcast to take advantage of ADT's lowest rate. With 36-month monitoring contract, early termination and installation fees apply. Excludes taxes and fees. Applies to traditional services only. Certain markets excluded. Licenses available at ADT.com. If we are indeed a dysfunctional family around here, Stugat is the Funkel. <laughs> he just walked in, and he walked, well, waddled in, his stomach first. His stomach arrived before the rest of him. <laughs> it usually does. And Mike Ryan immediately pounced by way of hello on the Funkel <laughs> and was like, wow, physically, actually, mid-season form. Your belly is... Uh, <laughs> Your belly's way out there, Funkel. And the Funkel's response was, this backpack isn't helping. Yeah. It's uh, it's pushing my ass forward. And Mike's response is, it looks like it's all the way forward in your belly. <laughs> Morning. <laughs> Welcome. Uh, you, were, you were doing lacrosse things this weekend. Stugatz, Stugatz wrote an article. There is, what? Wait, wait, not what? I mean, they're already laughing at me. It's really <laughs> wait, wait, absurd. I mean, I mean, how is Guillermo already laughing at uh, that? Oh, I had such a good weekend when that article came out because everyone was congratulating on how well I wrote it. <laughs> so great. <laughs> I put a lot of heart and soul into that article. Who got more congratulations, you, Mike, or Dan? Oh, I got a lot. Did you really? A lot. Good. Good people, for you. People think that you wrote... That it's well Stugatz, done. Stugatz's heartfelt tribute on Father's Day <laughs> on ESPN.com. People think you wrote it because you're the fake Stugatz or because you whisper stuff in his ear? Because I do a lot of his work. It was funny. I, I'm not going to lie. I don't want to take a shot at the article because I read like two two or three sentences oh, of it. Oh, no. So did I. But here's here's what happened. It started with, <laughs> I'm so grateful. And then I just thought of every morning when you come in, complaining about your drive. And I'm like, okay. Uh, I see where this is going. Drive is tough, man. I mean, it's, listen, it's not my dad's fault. It's not even Dan's fault. I mean, that's my fault. Dan told me we were coming here and I decided to move an hour north. And, <laughs> I'm not sure who wrote it, but I am sure it wasn't Sugats because that was way too long. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to have to deal with this. Man. Kudos, I can do it kudos. was Sugats. Sugats wrote it. Well, then kudos to Sugats for writing an article he himself would never read. <laughs> but, but it was good. I mean. Hold on. Everyone liked it, though. It was to the end. <laughs> he did write one that some people had trouble getting to to the end because how, you know, he had dialogue between him and his dad, and it took up a lot of space. I was skimming for a while. Thanks for your help and support, Dan. So you were you were wildly applauded, though. You stole Father's Day. Everybody was really moved. They did not know you were capable of feeling. <laughs> really? I have feelings. I mean, another human, dead, real human emotion. Another dead giveaway. <laughs> you guys received lots of help. <laughs> that was, uh, it was something I wanted to do for a while now, in large part because I see what Dan does with his dad every day. And, you know, my dad deserved a, uh, it was, it was a really cool present. My dad does not get emotional. He is simply not that kind of guy. And he called me yesterday and he was crying. And so, uh, what? Was, yeah, it was a pretty cool day. That was, it was cool for my dad, but it's already gotten to his head. I mean, I wake up this morning and it's, you know, hey, your followers love me. Yeah, he's all of a sudden he's on Twitter. It's like unbelievable. <laughs> he's, he wants to wait, wait, till it, wait till it turns the way it has with my father, where they seal your stuff and then are ungrateful about it. <laughs> I mean, I got listen, it's my dad will not stop. And so I honestly wish you had not written that thing for me. I mean, <laughs> bad idea. Great execution, though. I mean, do you think it's going to help us at all? Get you on around the horn? No. If you're if you're not familiar with what the issues are here, we'll tell you after we sign the contract. <laughs> and I hope it does, man. 
<laughs> that we signed the contracts? That, yes. I mean, if around the horn comes around at some point, and fantastic. I don't think it is, but it would be a nice little cherry on top. Well, if you're not familiar with it, around the horn refuses to allow Stugat to on, even though he's got legitimate advocates, and around the horn has lost two of its key panelists who have graduated to their own television show. So there is room there. For Stugatz, Izzy is arguing on his behalf. Mina is arguing on his behalf. I'm pretty sure Reality has argued on your behalf. But we'll tell you when the contract signed. <laughs> if the contract signed. Uh, how did the lacrosse team do this weekend? Oh, man, it was tough. Um, we lost in the semifinals. We had a great season. Uh, it was the uh, National Lacrosse Fest or something like that. They, quite frankly, they don't deserve for me to remember their name. I'm going to spend every oh, single no. day burying this tournament. I'm no, serious. No. Until someone calls me and apologizes. Because what happened yeah. in the semifinal game was egregious. Unbelievable. We're in the top division. Florida Select 2022. We go 4-0 in the most difficult division. We beat Mass Elite, which is the best program in Massachusetts. We beat them by a goal. We win the next game. One of the top travel teams in New Jersey, the Northeast. We beat them by a goal. We get to the semifinals, and because it's a New Jersey tournament, and they are so entitled about the lacrosse up there in New Jersey and Long Island, get over yourselves. The referee decided, I am not allowing a little team from Florida to win our tournament. So he gift-wrapped the entire game to the New Jersey team we played in the semifinals. Who then went on to win the tournament? They lost. They got crushed in the finals. 8-2, to two, which I'm very happy about because I'm telling you, that program and that coach, you're next. After I'm done with this tournament, I'm coming after you. Mike, how do you feel about Stugatz taking this platform for his diatribes against, uh, you know, youth leagues? I love it. I adore it. Weird. Go for it. It's amazing. It's so irresponsible. Because because he's not allowing for the one goal games that he won. He pointed out that he won two no, no, one goal no. games. My guess is perhaps the other coach has some problem with the officiating in that game, those games as well. No, the the referees were fine. Damn, what I'm telling you is we were in. There were six brackets, six divisions. We were in the top division, which means we get a you know if we win that division, which we did, we went four and zero. Those are the best teams. We win that and we get a bye in the playoffs, which we did. The playoffs then become two 12-minute halves, so it's a 24-minute game. And we made it to the semifinals against an inferior team. We had beaten that program's A team and B team on our way to the semifinals. So now we're playing their C team. The referee who's five minutes late and the other referee who's ten minutes late, both from New Jersey, they decided. And I told our coaches, we can't win this game. We're not going to win this game. I haven't said that in seven years. Why did I say it? The referees would not allow us to win that game. Well, is it possible? They would not allow us to win that game. Is it possible? And so I am telling you, Jim, the referee, who I will have your last name by the end of the show, I am telling you, I am going to bury you for the remainder of time until you call me and call my team, admit what you did, and apologize to my team. That's it. Period. Period. COB. Period. It started, like, he has till the end of today to apologize, and so does that tournament. I can't imagine why they wouldn't want this on Around the Horn. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you call them a little your little team from Florida, aren't you guys like undefeated? You always say, yeah, we're great. But I'm telling you, the teams in the Northeast, they do not. I'm I'm telling you, they're affected by this because there's recruiting stuff and these colleges, the major colleges, they're looking at the same five programs. And I'm telling you, college coaches, stop burying your heads in the sand. If you want a path to winning a national championship, oh, you will God. recruit right down here in South Florida and the yeah. Florida Select 2022 team Florida specifically. You'll God. recruit all of them, including my daughter. Free you, ride. He's just patting his sets for around the horn. Now he's this whistleblower that's blowing the top off a huge recruiting scandal. That's my next story, by the way, for ESPN.com. I'm working on it. It's a story. I'm going to expose. You can't be trusted with this power. You can't. They, uh, you, they're going to have to. This is investigative journalism, Dan. I'm a journalist now. And what I'm telling you is I am doing an investigation on this particular tournament. Um, and I'm doing an investigation on referees and how they rig games. I'm, I'm just, I'm telling you, I'm doing it. And I'm, I've spoken to the folks at ESPN.com and they love it because Guillermo, youth sports resonates with a lot of people. Guillermo, put it on the poll. Is Stugatz a journalist now? After writing a Father's Day article that he may or may not have written, <laughs> according to jealous allegers. And common sense. 
Totally fair. <laughs> Listen, I knew when I wrote this, there was no shot anyone could believe that I wrote hold, it. Hold on. Everyone loved it. They <laughs> really on. did. I appreciate all the uh, the amazing feedback. I've got another variable here that I hadn't considered, which is you're getting all of this applause but you didn't do this for your father out of emotion. You did it out of emotion for around the horn. This was not a gift for your father. There this, may have been an angle there. I mean, this is a gift where you turned into a journalist so you can be on around the horn and you're like, you're hitting send and then you're calling around the horn. Are we there yet? Yeah. Am, am I, am I now a journalist? Yeah. Do I, mean, I get to be a journalist? Dad would love to see me on around the horn. I mean, he would. He's going to get there first. My dad he is going to get on that show first. Give me a panelist this week. Now everyone's asking for more opinions from my dad. This is bad, what I've created here. I'm telling you, it's bad. He keeps texting me. Hey, you need anything else? I'm like, what do you oh, need? Do I need oh, anything else? You got, I know. I married him 15 years ago. <laughs> I'm familiar with how this goes from here. <laughs> I just made a deal with myself. You, you, want, you want more opinions? I got more opinions for you. I got plenty of opinions. How many opinions do you want, Dan? <laughs> yes. Uh, what One of the things in the article that was beautiful is that Stugatz is his father. I am. And wait until Stugatz. Have you gotten weepy yet when your daughters give you something for Father's Day as adults? as you know, Or as little adults, I guess I would say. Because, of course, when they're very little that moves you, right? Whenever they draw something sure. for you. Yeah. Uh, but like as little adults and as little teenagers who can be real a handful for daddy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've gotten emotional. Uh, Emma posted, you know, she, on, on Instagram, she posted um, several nice messages and pictures of me yesterday. Rachel just gave me a headache for Father's Day. But I love her. I mean, she's... She's the best, man. And I'm telling you right now, North Carolina, Maryland, Syracuse, all these teams, you want to win national championships, you recruit her. I'm just telling you right now. You take her from me. A, Get her out of my life. A texter writes in here. Love you, Rich. If you replace dad or father in Stugatz's article with just the word money, everything becomes clear. <laughs> is your home an ADT home? If not, you have to get ADT and help protect against break-ins, fire, and carbon monoxide. For a limited time, get ADT's lowest rate starting at just $28.99 a month from the most trusted name in home security. Go to ADT.com slash podcast to take advantage of ADT's lowest rate. With 36-month monitoring contract, early termination and installation fees apply. Excludes taxes and fees. Applies to traditional services only. Certain markets excluded. Licenses available ADT.com. Don Lebatard. Is The Undertaker the best name in the history of wrestling? 66% of the audience said yes. No, you're just wrong, man. It's a monsoon of gorillas. Stugatz. It's not just a monsoon. It's not just a gorilla. It's a monsoon of gorillas. How could there be a better name than Gorilla Monsoon? Like, how could you people be so wrong about this? What is the matter with you people? The Undertaker cannot be a better name than Gorilla Monsoon. A monsoon, not a tsunami, not a storm, not a thunderclap. A damn monsoon of gorillas. It's a haystack of Calhouns. Wow. Not as impressive as a monsoon of gorillas. This is the Dan Lebatar Show with the Stugats on the ticket. Texter writes in Ray Allen, anniversary of shot. Day five years ago, show some damn respect. Was that five years ago? Man, that was five years ago. Mm hmm. Where the hell? <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> Guillermo, put it on the poll. Where the hell did the last five years go? <laughs> when are they going to build a statue for that, by the way? They went to Cleveland. <laughs> yeah. um, I'm sure Stu Gods has something for Phil Mickelson at some point here. Uh, I just love how golf melted to the floor because he just decided to make it a putt-putt course. It was crazy the way white people reacted to that. <laughs> it was, it was, it really was. I was like, good God, man. I didn't realize I had to take my shoes off before entering this particular, particular sanctum. <laughs> Bill Mickelson's out there. Woo! I gamble. I'm crazy. I'm older. I'm having a midlife crisis. I shot past the hole. Let me just chase it here the way any one of us would if we were playing on the golf course and didn't care about what the score was. I've done that dozens of times, hundreds of times. I mean, that's what we do. It was crazy, the amount of clucking that that generated. He should be ashamed of himself. We'll get to that in a second. 
but Guillermo has actually read Stugatz's Father's Day column mm. now and has actually replaced the word dad with money. Right. And so now you will get what that column really meant if you had seen what Stugatz was trying to do on ESPN.com. And he got it past all the gatekeepers, editors, newspaper men. But here's what he was really trying to do. And we'll get to Mike with some LeBron rumors in a second. I don't take it for granted. Oh, no. Wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I want to hear it from wait, the, from, yes, wait, live Mike, voice. what? How did I misrepresent you? How did I misrepresent you? You're misrepresenting me because I'm saying I don't want to talk about this on the air. This is just an off-air take. Wow. You yeah. always do this. I just right. wanted to I, I'm not today. I thought, you I always thought, do this. You think that, I, that I'm somehow did say that. trying to I come mean, up with secret content. And you know what? In your defense, sometimes I am. But this one was a hard <laughs> okay. DNR. All right. I mean, even I heard it. <laughs> do not rumor. Yes. Hard, hard, hard DNR. DNR. Do not rumor. The gratitude visits Thank me every you. day. Every single one. Usually on the drive down to our beachfront studios at the Clevelander Hotel where I co-host the Dan Levitard Show with Stu Gotts on ESPN Radio. <laughs> it might be the most coveted piece of national sports radio real estate in the country. I don't take it for granted. Oh, no. Not one bit. Because I can't and I don't take it for granted. Because without money, I can't and don't arrive at this place every morning where I allegedly go to work with my friends. I get to do what I love because of money. Because of money, I still get to feel like a kid. Because of money, I get to laugh for a living. This job is truly a blessing. I don't merely do this thing I love, this thing I miss during my vacations, the sports opinion business that would be my hobby and escape if it weren't, you know, my career. I also get to be at home every afternoon for my wife and kids because of money. I get to be at the side of my teenage twin girls coaching one of them lacrosse because of money. I get to be there for the other's dance recitals because of money. I get to be there for the growth, for the important things, because of money. All right, let's try this again, uh, fakes to God, if we can, because some people here, and this is um, meaner, um, say replace the word Dan wherever you find dad. Oh, that's funny. I mean, listen, I should experience all of this as you guys being mean, but I don't care. It's funny. Like, yeah, that is that's because of money. That is a good idea, though. Do it with Dan. <laughs> Only in Stu God's voice, though. <laughs> we are desecrating this column that uh, Stu God's is already telling me his father's become a monster. Oh, yeah. Yep. Wants to do it weekly. Yep. See if you recognize any of this. <laughs> wants to have Wants to have a show with his son. Mm -hmm. About how Dwight Evans has the best arm he's ever seen in baseball. Dewey. <laughs> him. <laughs> it, uh, it is odd how him he is. <laughs> it is an odd time to take a trip to Miami. Well, what, what happened with Udonis on Ethan Skolnick's podcast? What happened? What's the sound you have back there? We have this sound uh, from uh, courtesy of the uh, Five Reasons Sports Network. All of uh, he Twitter uh, got uh, excited because LeBron came down here during the NBA Finals, had lunch with Dwayne Wade. I'm sure this was the only reason he came down to Miami to get this knowledge of uh, the people that he's been in the foxhole with. Um, and uh, a lot of people are sort of alluding, hey, maybe they talked about the future. Maybe they talked about Miami. And people have asked Udonis Haslam, yeah, I could see him coming back down here to Miami. I could. And we're running with this. Never mind the fact that everything seems to be pointing to Los Angeles, including Kawhi Leonard's behavior. But here's sound of that. I'll say one thing about this Bron situation. Yes. People t like people take everything out of context and they take things and they take what they want from things. Mm -hmm. I told people before the final me, Bron and Dwayne sat down and, and had lunch and people took it as I'm saying, I don't know where LeBron's playing that next year. I ain't asked them. I ain't talked about it. When me, him and Dwayne sat down, we talked about life. We talked about our kids. We talked about business. We in our thirties now. Basketball is not the only thing we talk about. So for people to take what I said or to interpret what I said, I mean, I ain't got phone calls. I'm looking on Instagram. I'm looking at the newspaper. Oh, Dwayne Wade's on. Nah, man. Okay, yeah, we sat down to eat. Is that a crime? The man swept the team before them. He had time to come down here and have dinner with friends. That's all that was. I don't know where LeBron going. I ain't asked LeBron where he's going. Hopefully he comes to the heat. But if not, I'm still going to be LeBron boy. Why, um, why is Udonis so upset? 
Because of Twitter? Yeah. Because he's lying? Um, I know that sound and tone. Udonis, it, it's a little too, I mean, what? You know, what, what, since when do you care what other people think? <laughs> the people, why? It, it sounds defensive. Udonis saying, oh, we had lunch. Is that a crime? What do you mean is that a crime? You can have lunch with your friends and you can have people be curious about who those friends are and why you're having lunch with them. If he's being honest, though, you can say, yeah, we talked about that stuff, but he's my friend and I'm not going to give up that information. Yeah. Like, he's lying. Whoa. He said business. What's business? I do wonder about LeBron, though, on that front who he shares what with, because I don't know if he's close enough to Udonis. I, I feel like LeBron is on a a different level from other peers. Yeah, that- it chokes me up, too. I uh, I miss him terribly, and I want uh, I want LeBron to come back here. But you know what? Credit to LeBron. It, let's just say Dwayne Wade's telling the truth. Um, which a lot of stories since tend to back this up, that he didn't know on that plane uh, ride, that private plane flight back from Vegas, he didn't really know what LeBron was exactly going to do. He may have had a feeling here. <laughs> well, he knew. Um, but he, Here's the problem with your theory. He's not lying. He keeps these things pretty secret. I mean, Remember that uh, that post-season uh, meal that he had with Bosch and Wade, and everybody said, we just had dinner and talked about life. Well, he managed to meet with Dan Gilbert in the middle of the last time he left without any of us really finding out about it. We thought we may have, but we didn't. Nobody, yeah. uh, Gilbert it, denied it, and we we ran away. Yeah, it took Gilbert posting a photo from a backyard somewhere in Ohio. Which was a lie. Which, yeah. that was a lie. Looking at my backyard is what he said while he was <laughs> flying down here on a private plane someone was tracking. You believe that everyone in the world is curious as to where LeBron's going except the people meeting with LeBron? Oh, I do think that they care less. Yes, I do think I do think that Udonis Haslam, having been around that business for as long as he has been, is less curious about LeBron's comings and goings than we are as fans. Yes. This guy I don't could know. come and change your team yeah. and yes. you don't want to just, hey, LeBron, where might you be going? I mean, but what point is Udonis in his career? Like, I mean, he's at a point where he's not playing at all, and he could tack on a couple more rings if LeBron comes down here. He, I mean, don't think he's not interested, Dan. He's definitely. I mean, if you're friends of LeBron, I'm aren't not, you more I'm, interested? I'm not saying he's not interested. I'm saying I could see where Udonis wouldn't spend a conversation boring LeBron with the same thing everyone's boring LeBron with. I mean, for us as, as fans, isn't Udonis at the point of his career where he's essentially on the heat to? have dinner with LeBron and convince him that's to come right. over here. That's right. That is, I mean, that's his job at this point. Yeah. Right. He's not He didn't playing. do his job. Udonis did not do his job correctly at this lunch and then in getting defensive on the Ethan Skolnick podcast afterward. I'm telling you, these guys have a bit of an adversarial relationship with everyone who's not them. For whatever they went through those, through those four years, whatever that felt like. Because we know they're lying. You understand what I'm saying, though. I believe that Udonis, Dwayne, and LeBron James uh, think to themselves, it's us against everybody. Everyone's against us. Even now? I I, I think so. Maybe less so LeBron, but Udonis has been carrying that around all his life. If you were ever trusted to get to a a dinner with LeBron James, me me personally? Yeah, he trusts you enough. To say, hey, came, come out and eat with me. You yourself, you're not asking him about that. I am not asking Dan him. Would oh, not. Come on, Dan would not. Dan would not. I would not. I would not. It's all I'd be asking about. You ask him about, like, Bronny's games? What would you talk to him about? <laughs> oh, how's Bronny doing? No, Dan would talk to him about anything other than basketball. He would. The real Lambo. Yeah. I think yeah. you'd yeah. want to ask him more about where he's playing than the real Lambo. Don't you guys have a lot of questions for LeBron that aren't basketball related? I mean, no. They're, they all have. Uh, I mean, I really they all have. Much. Much. Oh, yeah. What basketball other questions would there be? I don't even know what you're talking. If about. Basketball doesn't exist. I, I don't have these questions. Right. Pay for my <laughs> what is money really? All starts Something with like basketball. That, just deep. Just <laughs> <laughs> what is money really? No, that is not what I would ask him about. But I would ask him about business. I would like to know what it is. The business of basketball. What it is that. Uh, the end game is for him and his friends and how he navigates all that stuff. You guys don't find any of that interesting? Nope. So it's about the end game with you, dude. You guys think he's going to blurt, I'm going to L.A. That's what you guys get. I'm having lunch with Billy Gill. Now you slowly, you know, you build up to it. You smooth talk him. 
You right. start with the brawny stuff. How's brawny doing? Oh yeah, I heard he might be going to school in L.A. That's that's right. odd. That's how you do it. Heard good yeah. things about that school. Oh yeah, that should be that'd be great for him. Yeah. I'm a journalist now. Billy's right. I mean, what you do is you crack them open with the family stuff and the easy stuff, and then all of a sudden, a couple of minutes later, boom, yeah, we're in the Lakers. And if you're having a meal, you oh, yeah, you know, I've heard, I've heard this place is great filet. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. You should try. You want to split bread half He's on the bread? What do you want to do for an app? That's how you start. You get the ball rolling with food talk. Who is that, though? Is that me just gently being sensual, flirtatious? Like, who are no, you? No, not flirtatious. You're just there? building a good rapport with him. I see you're looking at your phone. Huh? Is that Kawhi? Just real smooth. No, no, that's too aggressive. Too aggressive. No, 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 too aggressive. No, 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 you got to ease into that, that Chris. No, you got to no, ease no. into that. Yeah, you got to eat. Wow, you see all this crazy stuff oh, with man. Kawhi? Oh, this phone. Right. This phone's just always right. going off. Right. It drives me crazy. Right. Sometimes I just wish I could disconnect. Woj alerts. Right. I mean, yeah. Kawhi is doing all, He's up to something. I can't really. You just let him flow. Right. Don't you guys like it when you leave the country? You can't get served. It's just such a nice disconnect. Oh, I wish I could do what you do every playoffs where you just disconnect from social media for a month. Oh. oh, this Magic Johnson! I mean, oh man, Magic! <laughs> look at all this! Uh, look at all this bread they brought out. It's a it's a wealth of assets, kind of like the, what the Boston Celtics have. No, <laughs> you know I'm trying not to eat bread, but sometimes you just got to treat yourself. Am I right, LeBron? <laughs> you know I like this restaurant. It's it's just a little new, and they it, ha- it really hasn't gone through the you know the wars of a long postseason run, kind of like the Philadelphia 76ers. Right. <laughs> Do they have this restaurant on the West Coast? No, they don't. No, it's not there. They don't have this in Cleveland either, do they? Oh, wow. It's just here? It's just in Miami? Oh, and you love it? This is your favorite restaurant, you say? Wow. A lot of good restaurants down here. So, imagine, imagine if you can eat this all the time. It's a little overpriced, though. Kind of like that Tyler Johnson contract a little bit. <laughs> you know, as a trade escalator, too. What is that? Huh? <laughs> ah, a little bit more water, please. More water. <laughs> Top me off. So what do you think about Josh Richardson as a wing? <laughs> so hypothetically... Let's say, you know, you were running the team, because I know one day you want to own a team. Yeah. What would you do to fix this roster? Yeah. Yeah, what would you do? Josh is starting to play a little bit better, you notice? He is. Yeah. Hypothetically. Just hypothetically. Just, just hypothetically. Yeah. Hypothetically, in your wildest dreams, would you be able to have a meal like this in Houston? I think not. It's a crap city. It's a real crap city. Yeah. Don't. What I'm saying is don't go to Houston. It's never, it's never going to be your city. J.J. Watt's there, you know? What do you think of J.J.? And uh, I don't want to... Watch your whispery. You have to whisper. Yeah. I never know who's listening. I don't want to intrude, but you guys are cutting Carmelo out of the deal, right? <laughs> right. You're, you're not letting him. You can't be serious. The old bait and switch. That's a, that's a lot to ask, right? <laughs> right? Oh, no, I'm fine. I, I don't need any more water. Thank you. <laughs> what do we say about Boston? What happens? Boston. What do we tell him? We tell him, don't go. Oh, yes. Please, your God. Yes. But we, we just start lying to him yes. and say, we have the... Hey, oh, we, have, we have the room for Paul and George, of course. Yeah. Of course. We, we, got the room. we got the room. Yeah, Kawhi, sure. Yeah. You never tell them no. <laughs> you just got to tell them yes. We'll figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> There's no shot he comes in. Uh, it's, it's over. It's over. It's over. That's why you Donaldson yeah. and asked. <laughs> <laughs> he knew. He knew. <laughs> why would you ask? <laughs> you, you literally can't make it work with a trade machine. I can't make it work. No assets. Patty Mills is a key. I don't. Why would anyone ask us? Why would anyone help us? Hey, you saw what happened the last time. You think now we think the NBA is just going to help us do this again? They hate us. They hate us. The city, Riley, everything. The Cavs made a million trades. No, nobody seemed to mind. No, no one wants to help us. No. Remember when we thought Shabazz was Oh, like, my God. Oh, Shabazz. Bad. That was the key. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No. That was the key. Oh. Shabazz. He told us to draft Shabazz. We did. Yeah, no, no. That. Yeah, my meal was okay. I, I guess I shouldn't have let you decide, LeBron, considering uh, your your history and with recommendations down here. Shabazz. <laughs> Shabazz. Uh, so we, we split in the check, or who's, who's got <laughs> Oh, Oh, I'm paying for this? Oh. Oh, okay. Hi, everyone. Stu Gatz here. Support for the Dan Levitard Show podcast comes from our friends at Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. Chances are you are confident when it comes to your work, your hobbies, and your life. Rocket Mortgage gives you the same level of confidence when it comes to buying a home or refinancing your existing home loan. Rocket Mortgage is simple, allowing you to fully understand all the details and be confident you are getting the right mortgage for you. To get started, go to rocketmortgage.com slash Stu that's rocketmortgage.com slash Stugatz, S-T-U-G-O-T-Z. 
equal housing lender, licensed in all 50 states. NMLS, consumeraccess.org number 3030. Don Levitard. To defute this guy's point where you're, he's calling it asinine, the comparison. Wait and I'm saying that it's not. Did you just say defute? I meant refute. That is a combination of diffuse and refute. Uh, they got together, had sex. Oh, just answer my question. And they birthed a defute. <laughs> Stugats. There was a whirlwind romance between refute and diffuse. I'm defuted. And they... <laughs> This is the Dan Levatar show with the Stugats on the ticket. Woo. Our movement's picking up speen- steam, boys. See what oh. happened over the weekend? Wow. No, I, I missed it. Three rogue fans in Baltimore took Brinson signs to the game. Rogue fans? Oh, yeah, three fans. We don't know any of them. Took signs on Saturday to the game to support our boy, Lewis Brinson. You see what happened yesterday, of course. No. Marlins no. lost 10-4. to four. Uh, Okay, well, that's... No Brinson. No win, son. Wow. That's, been more, that's been what more they say. And we were going for a sweep, right? Yeah. That's two in a row opportunities we had at sweeping. We didn't sweep either time, but we were there. All right? That's half the battle. These uh, Brinson signs, were they big? Were they caught on television? Um, From what I hear from the person who we don't know that was at the game, they didn't allow the person to hold the signs up during play, so they had to do it like in between innings. So the TV didn't catch them. But they were definitely on Instagram, and I hear that there were lots of people screaming Murray at the person holding the sign, which is great. <laughs> All right. So we're picking up we're picking up momentum. It was Lorenzo. Lorenzo took signs. Right. Lorenzo, yeah. Was yeah. Lorenzo to... also telling people how to vote for Lewis Brinson? Um, I think it may have been on the sign, but I know that he showed up like an hour late to the game, which isn't great. I'm still utterly confused at how you want me to vote for Lewis Brinson. You go to allstargame.com. You vote for Lewis Brinson. Very simple. You could vote for... Uh, Marcakis and Harper as yeah, well, that, if you that, want. That's that's the part that's confusing. Oh, and me. by the way, I think I made an agreement with uh, with the Rangers who want to get Adrian Beltre in the game, and someone asked if we could vote for Beltre, and they'd vote for Brinson, and I said, sure. Right, look, we're open for business <laughs> Wait, right the, now, okay? The official Rangers? No, some fan of the Rangers <laughs> who's trying to get Adrian Beltre in the game asked uh, you know, for our help with that. So right. so vote for Beltre vote and for Brinson Beltre and, and Marcakis. Brinson. Well, Marcakis and, and Harper are not official packs yet. We're open for business if you guys want to include anyone else. If there's any other those you are, know, people out there that are trying to get in, preferably C-O-E. not outfielders in the National League. Those are clear-cut getting in, Marcakis and Bryce Harper? Yeah, Marcakis and Bryce Harper are going to get in for sure. So it would help if you just continue to vote for them and vote Lewis Brinson in because that way he'll get that third spot. And the only reason we're doing this is because you're paranoid that MLB is discarding the votes that are just for Lewis Brinson. Well, no, we're also blocking votes from other players as well. Look, we know this. These these are things that we know. What do we know? Lewis Brinson. We want him in the All-Star game. Yes. We know this. Check. We know this. Check. MLB wait, wait, do probably you know this? doesn't <laughs> want him in you, the All-Star You've had game. your own internal conflict. Do you want this? I want it. Look, this is this is, this is is what I want. I want Lewis Brinson to be playing in the All-Star game. I like him. He's my favorite player. And by the way, i just like to say. Wait, wait, wait. He's it, your favorite player? Oh, he's become my favorite player. He's become wow. just over the course of this campaign. Oh, yeah. And by the way, since this campaign started, he's taken off. He's hitting over 300 this month. His numbers are crazy. Because of the. I don't know that it's because of the campaign or if it's just a coincidence, but the timelines definitely match up. And I know this also. Here's another thing that I know. I'm going to get a custom Lewis Brinson All Star Game jersey, whether he's there or not. Okay. <laughs> it's going to happen. Brinson 9 on the back. They're dope jerseys. Those are two things that I know. What yeah. happened to you this weekend? Because, like, late last week you were a little out on this, and now something happened over the weekend where you're back. Well, because He's I started... Brin Sin. I'm Brin Sin, man. Here's the thing. I, this is not a mean thing. This is not a mean-spirited thing, as people are trying to paint it out to be. I'm trying to get a Marlin in the All-Star game. All right? Now, would he get in the All-Star game on his own? Probably not. <laughs> but... I think that we can get him safe, in there. Safe bet. Safe problem. Well, we don't know. There's no way of knowing for sure. <laughs> there, so there I'm is. doing my best. And here's the thing. By the way, we could be the 76ers fans here. This could be our Joel Embiid. Yes. If this is a rebuild and this is the process, this is the face of that process. Is he not? Does he have process. a nickname? Is he not? Yeah, Brin Diesel. I gave it to him. No, no, no. But does the process have a nickname down here? People, you know how they say trust the process in Philadelphia here? They're trying to do like respect the process with a with two, two and this S. And, uh. But the thing is, is that they only do the two in respect, but not in process. So it's like re two pecked the process when it could be re two pecked. The Pro, Pro 22. Two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which I think rolls off the tongue a lot better than the other one. Yeah. So go to allstargame.com, vote in Lewis Brinson. and we've gotten a lot of momentum. And by the way, this is what I'm thinking. What? Because, you know, things have slowed, I think. Even though I think momentum's picking up, I think we're also headed towards an ebb 
in this process. Oh, we yeah. were flowing over the weekend, but I think we're headed towards an ebb oh. in the whole campaign. Yes, Chris? Do you know the definition of momentum? Yeah, we're picking up steam right now. But it's like we're, we, we went downhill, but we're about to go Lorenzo, back uphill. So things Lorenzo are slowing down. holding signs at Camden Yards yeah, and yeah, yeah. get on TV. So this yeah, yeah, is yeah. really – it's really cooking now. Yeah. 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 Well, well, wait till I make this announcement that I'm about to make. And okay. then things are about to take off. So we have a development. Quiet, please. Oh, yeah. All right. Go We've resorted to bribery here. Whoa. Listen, whoa, whoa, whoa. we have lots of shirts here. Uh-oh. Particularly UCF national championship shirts. Still, somehow we still have a ton of those. Yeah. So this is what I'm thinking. No, don't do this, man. We need those shirts. This is what I'm thinking. If you make a good enough sign and you take it to a ballpark, a ballpark doesn't even need to be the Marlins game, a ballpark, and it's a good enough sign, you will get a shirt. And this is another thing that I'm thinking. We have one Dan Lebetard show with Stugatz customized cutting board. That a company sent us that no one here wanted to take home. And I'm thinking that one person, I'm thinking a crazy number, first person to prove that they voted 5,000 times for Lewis Brinson is going to get that cutting board. And if we have two people, I'll cut it in half and you'll split it. Two people, half a cutting board. This is, we're going to lose all the shirts, so I think maybe some recalibration, perhaps. No, no, it has to be good enough. It has to be good enough. We have to deem it to be good enough. You should it's have to- super subjective. Well, yeah, that's that's how this works. It okay. has to be good enough. I hope only seven are good enough. Well, we'll determine what's good enough and what's not good enough, but you really need to make an effort. Lorenzo signs... Look, I like the intention that was there. He drove a long way to go to the game to do this for us. Terrible signs. One of them was even misspelled. Disaster. I couldn't even see it. Yeah, that's that's oh. a very great point. A very important gotta thing. Gotta go block lettering. When making signs for this project of ours you need to have it be thick enough to read if you just do one quick little sharpie pass like this not good enough no it has to be thick a couple lines through it has to be at least like two inches in diameter i'm thinking it should have to get on tv too it shouldn't just be you tweet us a picture of well, you there i want you to get on tv put yourself in front of a camera wave to the camera guy let's go yeah, put we're some talking about into a this. cutting board here people well yeah. the prop well no the cutting board is for five thousand votes if you can oh, prove okay. that you voted five thousand times you get the cutting board and as many people have voted five listen july 5th that's the deadline for the cutting board contest so if more more than one person has cut the cutting board or voted for the cutting board we're going to have to split it up because we only have one of those bad boys. And it's very nice. It's very nice. It is a very These nice These are some good board. prizes. I feel like it's going to pick up now. There's only one of those on Earth. And you could get it if you vote a sufficient amount of times before July 5th. That's that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. And if you want a shirt, make a very nice sign that would make me want to... Look, I hate sending shirts. I'm telling you right now. It's one of the things I like to do the least. Sometimes I'll tell you you're going to get a shirt. You'll get it three months from now because yep. I put it on a master list that I have. Look, Tim Kershaw wanted shirts. All right? Those were just sitting on a list for like two weeks. They're on I fi- back order. I finally sent them out the other day. So Tim Kirchner is about to get his shirts. You could get your shirts within two months of Tim Kirchner getting his shirts. The way that the, uh, the way that the big baller brand ships shoes, that's how you sell. Uh, exactly. Ship except we actually have the product right there. I'm I'm telling you, seven feet away from me, it's right there. This is this is not a manufacturer problem. No, this is just a workload thing. Sometimes that's on the back burner, but. This will be a priority. Priority one. After all the other stuff that's a priority, this will be top priority. You will get your shirts within six months. How did Ronda Rousey already get a championship oh, that's, that's opportunity this is the in the third WWE? third time that you've mentioned this. <laughs> See, all of a so sudden, you're wrestling this. pure. It's her second match. Like, are they, They're trying to sell us that this is this like thing you have to build for. It, she already has a title shot. Well, had. T- that, that opportunity came and went there, yeah. Chris Cody. Yeah. I, I would think such an ardent wrestling supporter, considering how how offended you are that she's gotten her opportunity, would uh, would know this already that she failed to win at uh, Money in the Bank. Well, she won. so she didn't lose That's the fine. match, but she didn't become champion. Exactly. She didn't lose a match. She won by disqualification because it was outside interference by the person who won the Money in the Bank contract. Yeah, yeah. Alexa Bliss. Spoiler Alexa alert. Bliss, five time champion now. By the way, spoiler, spoiler alert. alert. Oh, nice. Shocking. Yeah. I, I just don't understand this whole Ronda Rousey thing. Like. Who is coming over to watch WWE now? Is guy wearing tap out shirt at every ah. UFC fight on Saturday night now? Like I, turning in every Monday to watch Ronda Rousey? I, I don't see any new people coming to WWE. In this room, there are people that passively watch WWE and don't watch it at all. And I don't think Ronda Rousey has any sort of appeal for them. And you, I think the people watching Ronda Rousey right now are the same people that were watching the product without Ronda Rousey. And you guys are wrestling fans. Have you been like watching, like making sure to tune in to Ronda Rousey things? No. I, well, I didn't watch last night because I had a devil of a time uh, <laughs> oh, last boy. last night. I've uh, I, This weekend was relatively fun. I've been on what could only be described as a bender uh, for the last... 48 hours. A World Cup bender? Yeah, I've been on a World Cup bender and uh, alcohol. 
Um, absolutely, that's been involved too. No, this is a, a legit bender. It's not just all puppy dogs, ice cream, and soccer. No, there's some hardcore bourbon going on here too. Lots of Uber rides. It's um, I'm haggard, and it all came to a to a, a horrible culmination last night with what is the worst Father's Day experience of my life. And look, Father's Day never a great day for me. Because it's my dad always at the door saying, give me a hug. I give him a hug. And then he goes, where's my kiss? Wow. This is a new thing that he's been Where doing. At 30 years old, he decided, you know what? We're going to be the father and son that kiss each other on the cheek now. Did and you? I'm like, dad, I don't want to do this. I don't What's like wrong it. with I'm, you? Kiss your dad on the cheek. I don't yeah. want I've been living 30 years. <laughs> you don't even need to do the full kiss. You just do cheek to cheek and you make the sound. I That's know, the move. And do if you don't even want to get close, you put you pucker your lips the other way. So you go like this. Cheek? No, I'm just make outside. Yeah, no, you just I make the noise. No, I just make the noise, but I don't like doing I don't like I don't like people that do the hello kiss that their timing is off on the kiss because that happens to me all the time. You go and you basically you hit cheeks and then after you've kind of moved away, then you hear the and it's like no, no, your timing's off. You need to be better, be better at the hello kiss. How do you know when to do both cheeks? You just have to like read the other person. No, you go to another country. You go to another country. You go to, you go to France. Yeah, you go to Europe. Well, France. That's well. My bender started with you, Chris Cody, because after the show on Friday, we went to Brickle. Uh, for uh, Portugal, Spain. What a game. Which was an incredible game. That's one of the games that I'd lift up and tell everybody, hey, if you don't like soccer, watch this game. See if you like, because you have the guy that everyone sort of acknowledges as one of the top two players in the world, and he has a hat trick. You have a great team in Spain that everyone acknowledges as a good team. They deliver. It was a, it was a classic World Cup matchup. And you didn't stop? I did not stop after nice. that. Pr- mainly because my waitress took three hours to bring me the check, and I was stuck in Brickle uh, for the rest of the day. But then I went home, had some dinner, and then I went out to the Gables, and then I saw, oh, Fritz and Franz is out here. This is this uh, German place. Beer house. Yeah, Fritz and Franz beer yes. house. So and then I got the great idea while under the influence to just say, hey, everybody, let's just meet up here in, the, you know, in a couple hours. This France starts. So we did that. What? And, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So I woke up. At, I got home at like 2. Okay. And then I woke up at 5 a.m. Because France is playing. <laughs> and I like one of the players. So I saw France versus Australia, which wasn't very good. No. No. And then I walked to Graziano's next door. Uh, because that's an Argentinian place. And Argentina was playing. I saw that draw. And I was like, let's go back to Fritz. And so I walked back to Fritz. And I saw Denmark-Peru, which was an incredible game, even though it was only one zero. And then I was starting to crash a little bit. I was like, man, these Nigerian jerseys are good, but I don't know. (laughs) So I had 1% battery, which was enough for me to get an Uber. So I got home. I missed the Nigeria-Croatia game because that was the two hours of sleep that I would be getting this weekend. Then I hopped in an Uber to go to South Beach for a concert at the Fillmore. And even though I had a great time at this concert, I was like, that's not enough. They're DJing at Space. Let's go. So I went to Space to the wee hours. Yeah, I went to Space to, to see the guy. And you know I couldn't even see the DJs from where I was sitting. Uh, I couldn't even see them. But I was just, woo! Do you have to see DJs? No. Can, can no. you just hear them? I was, just, I was having a good time dancing. I feel like this is a cry for help. And, by then, the way. Yeah, yeah. and then I was uh, looking at I was like, let's go to Fritz tomorrow! So, you went I went, back to Fritz, Fritz? No, I didn't go back to Fritz because I had to have a Father's Day meal. Uh, with my father-in-law, it's cute. They they go to McDonald's. He doesn't ask me to kiss him on the cheek. I have a good relationship with my Wait, father-in-law. Whoa, 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 whoa! Your father-in-law's Father's Day meals at McDonald's. The tradition for Mother's Day and Father's Day is all the kids and uh, mom and dad. They all go to McDonald's and have a McDonald's breakfast, oh, which is nice. dope. sounds phenomenal. Yeah, it's a, it's a really playground McDonald's or no playground? No playground in oh, this one. Forget no it, playground. Oh, it's one of these Mick cafes. Oh, oh God! Yeah, it's one of these mixed oh. ca- mixed cafes. Do you order from an actual person, or you order from the robot order? No, I order from an actual person. Oh, I will not God. order robot. But my favorite thing about Mick Cafes now is you can tell the political leanings of whoever owns that franchise because it's either on CNN or Fox News. And uh, uh, this morning was on the Fox News, so I, I kind of know where you're headed. Do you not look at the other people who are having Father's Day McDonald's breakfast who aren't doing it for tra- traditional reasons and get sad on their behalf? No. Often. No, um, McDonald's is dope. Often. Are you get, have you ever had a McGriddle? It's also I discovered it like a month ago. McGriddles are dope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm also like, getting to the point where I'm recognizing some of these people from previous Father's Day. So oh, some wow. of the people have that tradition. Yeah. So uh, 
I was like, all right, let's you know, let's go somewhere, and nobody wanted to go. So I was like, all right, I'm gonna pick up steak because I went to Graziano's, and I was like, you know, I wanted to grill something for, and I saw that they had all these steaks, so I went to an Argentinian place on Sunset, and I got these huge, massive, fatty, boneless ribeyes, and I took them home, and I was like, I was just preparing it all day because I wanted my father's day to be special. So I put them on the grill. And my wife's sleeping because of this weekend, this bender that I'm telling you. And my dad's there not helping, just being annoying. <laughs> and I, t- I have to run inside to saute some mushrooms because I can't eat carbs. So I have to do that. I have a stove. I have the oven running. I have this meat on the grill. And I'm like, oh, let me go outside to check on the meat. I go outside. My entire barbecue is on fire. <laughs> oh. The entire thing. It, it is a blaze that I'm dangerously close to losing my house. And I can't let my house burn down just because I don't want to hear it from my dad. Wow. <laughs> All right? So I'm like, do I put water? No, it could be a grease fire. That's, uh, so I turn off yeah. the propane. I just start bl- blowing. I'm like, so so like I have these super burned steaks, and I come back inside, and my wife's messing around with the garbage disposal and a shot glass because my dad comes over. He's like, you know what? I want a shot of Fireball. I'm like, Dad, you're 60 years old. He just discovered it. He's like, it tastes so good. That sh- that that shot glass gets stuck in my garbage disposal. My wife turns it on, unbeknownst to her, breaks my garbage disposal. I get so frustrated with the entire event my garbage disposal smoking <laughs> i throw my phone in in frustration and i throw it under the stove oh, and for 30 seconds no. i'm just like shaking the stove and i just tell my dad get up 